2013 revenue. In order to meet the demands of local and regional markets, the BMC abattoir in Maun was upgraded and automated to increase production. This will assist in marketing cattle from Ngami land. The dairy development strategy adopted last year is beginning to bear fruit as Sunnyside Farm near Lobazi has been leased to a dairy company. Further investment in the dairy subsector is being processed for Milk Afrique and Semitwe Dairy. The transformation of the Botswana College of Agriculture into the University of Agriculture and Natural Resources is on track. This university will focus on the practical applications of science and agro-related research. The National Agriculture Research and Development Institute was launched in June of this year, following the decision to merge the Department of Agricultural Research with the National Veterinary Laboratory and the National Food Technology Research Center. This establishment will focus in areas of promoting research, innovation, and training. Coming to minerals, Madam Speaker, as I earlier alluded to, while the mineral sector remains a principal source of revenue and primary sector for economic growth and diversification, it currently is challenged by depressed markets. As at the end of August 2015, the benchmark global price of one carat and 0 0.30 carat diamonds had declined by almost 13% and 29% respectively over the past 12 months due largely to weakened Asian demand. While demand is projected to recover, the latest downturn underscores the fact that the era when we could almost rely on a steady demand and rising prices for our gems has given way to greater uncertainty. The anticipated reopening of the Lerala and BK-11 mines, which have been under care and maintenance since 2012, has thus been delayed. Gagu Mine, however, started operation during the last quarter of 2014, while Karoe Mine continues, however, to enjoy success. The recent closures of two diamond factories in, in Botswana, albeit offset by the opening of two others, as well as bankruptcies in some major diamond trading centers in other parts of the world, further point to the fragile and fluid nature of the industry. We have also decided as government to establish the Minerals Development Company, Botswana, to manage government investments in mining and diamond valuation services. To energy, Madam Speaker, transitioning Botswana from an energy dependent to an energy surplus nation is a priority. Murupule B power station continues to undergo remedial works. Our energy supply is therefore supplemented by the Orapa and Matsilahabedi diesel peaking plants. To ensure long-term security of power supply, the government is in the process of procuring independent power producers for the development of an additional 300 megawatts by extending Murupule B with units five and six, each being 150 megawatts, as well as a further 300 megawatts at a coal field yet to be determined. We are also refurbishing Murupule A while we are going to introduce solar power plants as well. In light of our recent frustrations with the poor delivery of the Murupule B and other projects, government is in the process of establishing a project management office to oversee the implementation of major energy and water projects. This will be done through appropriate project management methodologies. It is worth noting that our increased demand for energy has in part been due to the success of our nat national electricity access program. As of May this year, 2015, the program has enabled almost 50,000 additional households to connect to the national grid. Yeah, yeah. The total number of electrified households now stands at 302,436, 
while the total number of gazetted villages that have been electrified now stands at 77%. With respect to the petroleum se subsector, Madam Speaker, a quality monitoring program of petroleum products to protect consumers and the environment is in place. Government will ultimately increase the strategic stock of petroleum products once the construction of the 149 million litres facility at Seller Hills is completed. Once completed, it will give government additional 40 days worth of stocks as part of extending the security of supply for this country. Coming to water, Madam Speaker, securing our domestic water needs through better management and increased conservation as well as expanded supply will continue to challenge us for some time. Government has availed a budget for emergency projects, for network expan expansions and extensions, for groundwater investigations and the expansion installation of water treatment plant capacity. Altogether, more than one billion pulas worth of projects are at various stages of implementation. With the completion of the Dikatlong, Lotsani and Tune dams, our efforts have shifted to associated infrastructure. The Dikatlong pipeline was commissioned in October last year with Lotsani infrastructure when while the Lotsani infrastructure is complete and supplies water to 22 villages. The extension of the north-south carrier from Moralani, brake pressure tank to Palape is ongoing and is now scheduled for completion in June next year. An additional pump station is to be co constructed near Serorome Valley to improve delivery and efficiency of the NSC-1 downstream of Mahalape to Kaburuni. The Mamashia Kanye NSC connection project commenced in August last year and will be completed in February of 2017. This project will supply the villages of Tamaha, Mushupa, Kanye with water from the Mamashia Water Treatment Works. Additional government initiatives to improve water supply and sanitation include projects such as the Maun Water Supply and Sanitation Phase 2, Kanye and Molepolole Sanitation, Seronga Gudigwa Water Supply, Shakawe Water Treatment Plant, Mohodi Hill Pizani Pipeline, and the Boteti Northern Cluster Water Project. Going forward, a comprehensive assessment of all water challenges is also being finalized to assist with the prioritization and implementation of all water projects. A task team formed to carry out an assessment of the water and wastewater situation in Botswana has recommended a number of projects meant to increase water supply across the country. Government has completed the Masama East Phase 1 boreholes injection into the NSC-1 pipeline at a cost of more than 300 million pula as a means of supplementing the water supply to the greater Kaburuni region. Plans are also underway to extend a similar project at Masama West, which in fact has begun, known as Phase 2, at an estimated cost of some 450 million pula. Both the Palape and the Mamashia water treatment plants will be expanded by the Water Utilities Corporation to increase the capacity to 40 million cubic litres a day from the current 16 million cubic litres a day due to the increased water demand for the Palape Soroi areas and increase the capacity of Mamashia to 180 million cubic litres a day so as to be able to receive the additional amount of water coming through the NSC2 pipeline and subsequently meet demands of the Habruni water supply system. The commissioning of the expanded plants is scheduled for mid-2018. Government has further begun a project to treat the Ramutua well-field borehole water for portable use, which will augment water supply to our southeast district villages. This project is expected to be complete before the end of the current financial year. Madam Speaker, tapping into shared water courses will be critical to securing our nation's long-term water needs. We therefore continue to prioritize transboundary cooperation under the auspices of the SADC Protocol on Shared Water Courses. 
The Chobi Zambezi water transfer scheme is ongoing, while the Lesotho Highlands feasibility study has also been completed and its findings are under evaluation. Turning, Madam Speaker, to public infrastructure. Our delivery of additional quality public infrastructure through the ESP will be facilitated through the implementation of recent legislation governing the construction industry, which has set professional standards for improved performance and self-regulation to protect the public interests. Under the 15% maintenance reservation program, we have continued to create opportunities for the youth, for their own construction companies and individual youth with vocational skills in the construction industry. Since the program started in 2009, to date, maintenance tenders worth 167,531,666 Bula have been awarded countrywide to 250 youth-owned companies and 196 individuals with vocational skills in the construction industry. The private sector is also engaging youth-owned companies listed in the government database on works so far to the value of some 36,640,122 pula. Turning to transport, Madam Speaker, the government continues to maintain and rehabilitate 18,000 kilometers of road network, comprising of some 6,400 kilometers of tarmac roads, 7,600 gravel roads, and 4,000 earth track roads. As part of ESP, we will increase funding in this year for the projects, to, in, the, in the coming year, for projects to decongest the A1 road while building bypasses in Francistown Mule Polole and Lobazi. Yeah, yeah. We will further prioritize the construction of access roads across the country to help stimulate local economic activity. Bridges under implementation include bridges at Blachan, Ramutza, Kazungula, and Mohembo. Yeah. Madam Speaker, Botswana Railways is reintroducing the passenger train service to run between Lobazi and Francistown. The plan is to run a daily scheduled night services from each end with additional services during the holidays. The service is expected to commence in March 2016. To further, to further improve business performance and service delivery, Botswana Railways is undertaking a project to procure eight locomotives while rehabilitating its train station facilities. <laughs> With respect to aviation, the construction of the Kasani Terminal Building, which commenced on the 3rd of November 2014, is scheduled for completion in August next year, while the construction of new air traffic control tower and technical block at, at Maun commenced in January 2015, with completion scheduled for January 2016. Works at the Sersaretsi International Airport Terminal Building have been completed. Information and communication technology. Madam Speaker, government continues to leverage information and communication technology to improve the quality of life for Botswana, while positioning the country as a regional ICT hub. To promote local job creation and citizen empowerment in ICT, as part of our ESP initiative, we have decided to increase the number of ICT areas reserved for citizen-owned and operated ICT companies. Some of these areas include government computer maintenance and procurement, including second level support operations and maintenance. We also intend to provide incentives for local assembly. This decision dovetails with our commitment to accelerate the upgrading of ICT systems across government for the effective delivery of critical e-services in such areas as health, education, doing business facilitation, and immigration. We further intend to draw from the Universal Access Fund to fast-track the extension of broadband connectivity to all villages which have a population of less than 5,000 Pula in the Hansi, Kalahadi, Kwening, and Northwest districts. This project includes rollout broadband connectivity to 175 schools in the same districts, as well as another 523 schools in other parts of the country. Madam Speaker, 
BOCRA continues to monitor the performance of the telecommunications networks and the concerns raised by the general public relating to the unsatisfactory quality of the service of some of these networks. Operators have, however, put in place mitigation strategies in order to address the noted challenges. Overall, these operators have committed over 150 million pula this year to improve infrastructure in order to accommodate new technology leading to improvements in quality of service. For its part, Bokra is procuring a fixed and mobile quality of service monitoring tool in order to independently assess the quality of service of telecommunications networks. Education and training. Madam Speaker, as a matter of urgency, government has also initiated an extensive program of construction and maintenance works in schools countrywide. As part of the economic stimulus program, this includes the construction of 5,885 additional houses for both primary and secondary school teachers, along with 1,153 new classrooms in the primary and secondary schools, as well as an additional 175 science labs and upgrading 1,280 ablution facilities. We will also be converting two junior secondary schools into unified schools. The development of the Education and Training Sector Strategic Plan, ETSSP, was completed in November 2014 and approved by Cabinet in 2015. The plan is a reform strategy for improving the quality of the education sector's performance. At its core, the ETSSP is focused on improving governance through enhanced educational administration to deliver better coordination and resource allocation as well as strategic planning. ETSSP also provides for standard setting and more robust monitoring and evaluation to reduce the implementation gaps that have resulted in the recent trend of declining school performance. Consistent with the ETSSP objective of closing the existing skills mismatch between too many school leavers and actual labor market demands, as well as our ESP commitment of accelerated job creation, government has set up the 20,000 target initiative, or the target 20,000 initiative, for the rapid upskilling and retooling of unemployed youth to meet current industry demands. This will be done in phases starting with an intake of 5,000 students during the 2015-16 financial year. The training will focus on industry areas identified as being in high demand, including finance and business services, tourism, the creative industries, mining, energy and water resources, agriculture, construction, and transport. Moving forward, the mix of training needs will be as guided by the Human Resource Development Council. This new initiative was introduced to cater for the still considerable number of youth who have not already benefited from some form of skills training. Government also continues to expand the one-year reception program, which is currently catering for 9,146 learners in 226 public primary schools. As of January 2016, these numbers will rise to an estimated 12,660 learners in 422 schools. Continued progress is also being made in upgrading primary teacher certificate holders to diploma in primary education. A total of 2,274 teachers have been trained since 2010, with an additional 823 currently undergoing training. The intention of the program is to eventually upgrade all teachers to a minimum of diploma level. Another key priority area is the use of utilization of ICT as a means to improve teaching and learning, which calls for infrastructure and connectivity, as well as curriculum integration and the development and use of relevant content and software. 
Efforts made towards improving access to ICT include installation of Wi-Fi technology in 80 secondary schools and upgrading computer laboratories in 62 of the 239 secondary schools countrywide. Government is committed to further improve classroom access to ICT by providing computers to over 100 secondary schools during this 2015-16 financial year. Yeah. <coughs> Madam Speaker, in an endeavor to promote government modernization with the education sector, an open source system from UNESCO, Open EMIS or Open EMIS, has been adopted. It is a royalty-free system with a free source code and no license and maintenance fees. The system will be used to automate processes across the 10 ministries with education processes in order to track progress in the implementation of our education-related developmental goals and other measures. Botswana is the first African country to embrace this system. And UNESCO is providing technical support for its effective implementation as a potential example for other countries in the region. I'm pleased to report also, Madam Speaker, that the construction phase of the academic hospital under the University of Botswana was completed in December last year. What is currently ongoing is the extensive equipping of the academic hospital, which is in progress and is expected to be opened sometime next year. On research and innovation, Madam Speaker, in today's fast-changing world, sustained development is reliant on innovation arising from scientific and technological research. To accelerate the implementation of our 2011 policy on research, science and technology, and innovation, government is drafting a bill to establish the structures to coordinate and fund future science and technology-related research. In an endeavor to maintain up-to-date information on research and innovation, an online research information management system is also being developed. The Mineral Beneficiation Program of BTRI is also underway with the setup of a laboratory and pilot plant for coal to liquid technology to, to facilitate research efforts that could lead to coal product beneficiation. Construction of the Botswana Innovation Hub headquarters at the Science and Technology Park is still ongoing with the expectation that the park will be officially opened next year. Under governance, safety and security, Madam Speaker, it is pleasing to once more note that over the past year, various reputable international indices, such as last month's Ibrahim Index of African Governance, the Global Peace Index, and the World Justice Project's Rule of Law Index, as well as various private risk and perception polling surveys, including those by Aon, Verisk Maplecroft, Transparency International, Afrobarometer, and the Economist Intelligence Unit, all underscore our country's continued high international as well as regional ratings when it comes to issues of governance, respect for the rule of law, safety and security, adherence to democratic norms and commitment to fighting corruption. <laughs> if you know how to read,